The results of the elections, which were carried out on February 25th, reflected the desperation of a people whose desire to end the war, desire to end hunger, was reflected in the way they voted. But it does not mean that the people voted to, for, to return to the past, that the people did not vote to return to torture, to imprisonment, to the kind of things that the National Guard, who now bear the name La Contra, continue committing against our people. The pe people voted for life. They voted to an end to the aggression on the part of the United States. Ahora la administración, ahora la administración Bush tiene que reparar los daños que ha causado a mi gente. Tiene que reparar el daño económico. Tiene que reparar el daño de tantos niños y padres sin hogares y tantas personas discapacitadas. Pero también la administración Bush tiene que acabar con la guerra. Tiene que desmovilizar y desarmar a la contra, ya porque sigue amenazando a nuestro pueblo, sigue agrediendo a los internacionalistas que colaboran en nuestro país para levantar escuelas y la reforma agraria, sin la desmovilización de la contra antes del 25 de
it's amazing and humbling because for so long we've arrogantly thought the United States to be the epitome of democracy and justice. We've regarded other nations' efforts condescendingly, but suddenly the world is passing us by. The emperor is without his clothes. And yet again, with our Panamanian adventure, we are regarded as a global void. As to this administration's intentions where Panama and Nicaragua are concerned, many questions there are to be answered if they ever give the promised monies as to who will receive them and how they will be dispersed and dispensed and just how retired will the Contras really be. My fear, however, is that the American public will become softened by these events. And with the media continuing to downplay what's happening in El Salvador, Americans will rubber stamp whatever the administration wants for El Salvador. And what the administration wants for El Salvador is the status quo the repressive regime of the Christiani government. I got a personal dose of this attitude in 1980. One of the sponsors of Lou Grant was also interested in the status quo. Kimberly Clark owned two factories in El Salvador. And when I started speaking out about El Salvador, they pulled their advertising from the show. Well, all right. I'm sure they weren't thrilled with my union activities either, since the wages they pay Salvadorans are paltry. Our government continues to fund the status quo, and the situation has steadily worsened. During the last eight months, over 6,000 Salvadorans have been killed, 123 disappeared, and over 8,000 have been jailed. Cristiani's state of siege allows citizens to be jailed up to 15 days without reason or recourse. A couple of months ago, a member of Cristiani's death squad defected to this country with the aid of a couple of human rights groups. This young man personally killed eight Salvadoran citizens as a death squad soldier. And his testimony has confirmed what we've already suspected. Our government not only knows about these activities, but abets them. The young man drew a map of the 1st Brigade's compound and offices, including a section in which two American advisors have their offices, adjacent to the death squad commanders and down the hall from secret jail cells where Salvadorans are tortured daily. The Americans don't kill Salvadorans and the citizens, the citizens of El Salvador, but they know of the torture and the deaths. And if the death squads need a truck or other equipment, our American advisors supply it. You can imagine that this soldier's story has caused a stir. Last month, he testified before the Congressional Committee investigating the deaths of the Jesuits. Then just a few weeks ago, several of those congressmen, including George Miller, Gary Studs, and Bob Dornan, traveled to Salvador to check out his story. When they requested a tour of the 1st Brigade, they were received by the commanding officer who's used to having Americans visit. He showed them some jail cells for political prisoners and proudly stated, prisoners are held only 72 hours before being turned over to the proper authorities, according to the Geneva Convention. The congressman then took out the map and said, 
now we want to go there, pointing to the American advisor's offices and death squad jail cells. The officer became flustered and started taking them in another direction. That wasn't good enough for our congressmen. They made their way to the door marked Access Limited, which they knew was the entry to the intelligence compound. Inside, they found the secret jail cells. They found tortured prisoners. The officer claimed they were their own soldiers being disciplined. I understand one of the congressmen blew up and called him a liar. So we have many dirty little secrets that have yet to be uncovered in El Salvador. And our outcry and protest is one of the best ways of putting a stop to it. I'm proud to be in an industry that can produce a film like Romero. A film treated abominably, and yet it continues to tell the truth so eloquently. My acting gives me a unique way of protest, but I'm only a mouse. You, you, God love you, are the feet, the hands, the people. Continue to pressure your congressman and your president. Those you have literally hired with your votes to practice the democracy and self-determination they preach. And you can do something else. You can do something else very simple. Support the Folgers Coffee Boycott. Folgers. Folgers contains a high percentage of Salvadoran beans. Coffee is the lifeblood of Salvador's powerful elite. It finances the war and repression. The U.S. buys 60% of their coffee, but it's only 5% of what we drink. So conglomerates like Procter & Gamble can easily switch. The boycott is working. Longshoremen won't unload it on the West Coast. The LA City Council has declared a moratorium on Salvadoran coffee, and many other cities and organizations are following suit. Let Folgers know you won't drink their coffee in protest of human rights violations in El Salvador. Thank you for being here today. El Pueblo Unido. have been killed by the death squad and the right wing. I am here today because I feel the United States should have a more constructive and understanding foreign policy towards Central America, nor foreign policy where weapons and military solutions are the aim, but where an economic aid is experiment and bomb my people bomb the poor people of El Chorrillo, San Miguelito, and Colón. They created another Hiroshima in Central America. The U.S. government justified this blood invasion by calling it just call. Mr. Bush, your just call has left between 2,000 to 7,000 Panamanian dead, and they are also human beings. They have been burned to ashes and buried in mass graves in the name of just cause. Mr. Bush.